Hello everyone, welcome to the Adas Platform Channel. In this video, we'll cover how to set up clusters on the M5 chart of gold futures on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. This will enable you to effectively analyze cluster charts, the dynamics of buyers and sellers' actions, as well as identify good entry and market reversal points. One of the main advantages of volume analysis over technical or fundamental one is that traders can see the actions of other traders in real time. It is well known that the actions of buyers and sellers make the price move or stop. Cluster charts enable you to see what buyers and sellers are doing. A cluster chart is a set of exchange candles that show various exchange data at each price level, for example, the number of trades, the volume of trades of buyers and sellers, and various derivatives. Chart filters allow you to customize filters for Trading volume at bid or ask prices Total quantity of ask and bid volumes Total number of trades executed Based on this data, we can use additional filters Clusters with a certain percentage of the total volume or the number of trades Imbalances where there is a search for the disproportion between neighboring price levels you can load the necessary number of filters in the settings by clicking on the plus sign and selecting the required filter in the settings group. The advantage of these filters is that there is no need to load separate indicators on the chart. All filters are lightweight for the chart. In this video, we'll be discussing the first two filters, ask and bid. Ask represents the price at which market buys are traded, and bid represents market sells. Since the market is a battle between buyers and sellers, we need to understand what both parties are doing at every moment. We will use the following logical patterns for the bid-slash-ask modes. 1. Traps for sellers in an uptrend and traps for buyers in a downtrend. 2. Counter-trend aggression of buyers and sellers. But first, we need to set up clusters. Let's delve into the logic of how to check if clusters are relevant. We won't be analyzing clusters in isolation from the market context. This means that we'll be conducting a market analysis to determine the trend. After that, we need to eliminate excessively small or large values. If you use extreme cluster values, they will occur rarely, so we won't be discussing them in this video. Our goal here is to filter out market noise and focus on significant clusters. Now, the question arises, how do we determine which clusters are truly important? The simplest and most effective method is to ensure that the price reacts to them. We will use two indicators of importance. The price should react to the cluster in the vast majority of cases. By reaction, we mean a bounce from the previously formed cluster or, in the case of a cluster breakout, it should act as a mirror level with a price bounce. A candlestick tail that occurred after an attempt to break the cluster can be considered a bounce. The candlestick closing around the cluster after testing can also be a bounce. These two indicators suggest that the price failed to break the cluster, indicating that the price considers this cluster as a strong level. Additionally, some clusters should form in areas of extremes with trend reversal. This method is quite subjective, but after practicing for a few days on different instruments, you will become accustomed to this process. All 100% of clusters will not perfectly elicit a price reaction, but most of them should. We increase the value until we filter out most of the highlighted clusters. During the process of increasing, visually check each cluster for price reaction. There are some important points to consider during the setup. Take into account the trading session for which you are setting up the clusters. In this example, the setup is being done for the American session of gold futures. For this instrument, separate filters need to be selected for the European and Asian sessions. Avoid using extremely small or large timeframes. It is best to use M5 or M15 timeframes for American futures and cryptocurrencies. Once you feel confident that the filter has been selected correctly, check at least 5 American trading sessions on different days. We can observe that this filter consistently elicits a price reaction to the clusters during all days, indicating that the values are not random. Now we're ready to delve into exploring the first pattern, traps for buyers and sellers. To increase your chances of success, you need to have your own trend identification filter. For example, we'll use a moving average, which will show us the current trend. You can replace this indicator with your own trend identification method. I have set the period to 12, which equals 1 hour on a 5-minute chart. This means we'll be relying on the price dynamics over the past hour. 
Using the session color indicator, we'll highlight the American session in white, while the others will be in gray. Activity increases around 12 o'clock universal time coordinated. Let's begin with traps for buyers. In the cluster settings, select ask and set the color to green. Now, when the price is below the EMA, we need to identify clusters of buyers and observe the price reaction to identify signs of traps for buyers. We can see four instances when the price attempted to move in a downtrend. I've highlighted the zones with the relevant buyers in red. But as we can see in none of these attempts did the price manage to establish itself below the clusters. This means we didn't find any indications that buyers were caught in a trap. In the fourth example, we see the price pushing through the clusters of buyers after their appearance, followed by a downward impulse. Although there wasn't a clear retest of these clusters for an entry point in this case, the price dynamics became apparent. Following the impulse, a new buyer emerged but failed to reverse the price. Instead, the price resumed its downward movement, testing the clusters two times. Notice the tails and candle closings that tested the clusters, they indicate two unsuccessful attempts to move higher. As the downward movement progressed, additional traps for buyers were set. However, the price was moving aggressively, offering no pullbacks to the previous clusters for entry points. However, during this trend, there was still one opportunity with relatively low risk. The active trading phase concluded with this impulse on that day, so let's proceed to the next one. The next day, active trading started with an uptrend, which we didn't use to look for traps for buyers. After some time, we observed a strong breakout of the moving average and the price consolidating below it. At this point, we saw the final trap for buyers, and in the next candle, there was a test of the cluster. Pay attention to the candle closing and its tail, these are the most reliable indications of a successful trap for buyers. The decline continued, and after the candle closed, we once again saw a trap for buyers. Over the next 15 minutes, there were several tests of the clusters, and the downtrend continued very actively. Then, we again spotted a trap for buyers, followed by a retest, candle tails, and a new impulse. You can see several similar situations with traps for buyers on different days. Remember that these cluster settings are valid for the American session. Of course, there can be breakouts of such traps. If the price consolidates above, then the significance of that cluster diminishes, and we should expect new traps. Similarly, the emergence of a new cluster below the previous one makes it the most relevant at the moment. In some cases, there might be multiple traps within a single candle, and the most critical level would be the lowest cluster of the buyer. Retests of these traps may involve all clusters, but the closing shouldn't be above our current cluster, a candle tail should be above it. Then we can consider the trap successful. Let's consider the opposite situation, traps for sellers. Here, we wait for the price to break above the moving average to get a filter for an upward trend. Then, we anticipate the appearance of sells and the upward reaction of the price. We're waiting for an upward impulse, following a price pullback and a test of the cluster. Similar to the buyer scenario, to confirm the trap, we need to see a candle tail at the bottom, and the price closing shouldn't be below the cluster. If the candle closes below the seller cluster, this level loses its significance. We must wait for a new cluster and a new trap. The advantage of this pattern is that you have a good chance of capturing impulsive movements by filtering clusters based on trend signals. When you track each and every cluster for traps, you're more likely to encounter losing situations because, in an upward trend, you should seek buying opportunities to avoid trading against the trend. Trading against the trend carries more risks than benefits. Another risk in trading involves going beyond the cluster during its testing, meaning that very short stop losses can often be triggered. Therefore, the critical event for setting a stop loss will be the candle closing that tests the cluster. The presence of a tail will offer guidance on where to place the stop loss, effectively preventing stop losses from being hit by market noise. Now let's move on to the second pattern, counter-trend aggression of buyers and sellers. This pattern is riskier as it appears against the trend, and during a strong trend, such patterns can break more often. However, the advantage of this pattern will be a significantly greater potential for movement if a trend reversal occurs. In the previous pattern, we missed part of the movement as we waited for the break above the moving average. 
In this pattern, our focus will be on breakouts of buyer clusters when the price is below the moving average, and breakdowns of seller clusters when the price is above the moving average. Let's start by examining seller aggression during an uptrend. After an increase in trading activity, the price transitions into an uptrend above the moving average. The first signs of seller aggression appear, but the price doesn't drop below. We bounce upwards, and after some time, a candle with an upper tail appears, indicating seller aggression. For us, this means that the price was moving upwards, but sellers took control, and the candle closed below the seller clusters. We must wait for the candle to close to confirm the aggression. On the next candle, we see a tail that represents a test of an aggressive buyer and the downward movement resumes. Then, there is a breakdown that confirms the victory of sellers. However, this is short-lived, after some time, the price re-enters an uptrend, and a series of seller aggression clusters appear, but without success. Each time a cluster appears, the seller loses, but after another attempt, the price breaks down a whole group of seller clusters, confirming signs of seller strength. A tail represents the testing of clusters, and the downward movement resumes. In the next example, we'll see what happens when you encounter a strong trend and attempt to catch counter-trend signals. The American session opens in an uptrend, so we're looking for seller aggression. We observe signs of successful aggression, in the second candle, we see an upper tail, confirming that the cluster is indeed significant. However, the trend proves to be stronger, and the price breaks through the seller and moves in a very strong impulse. In this situation, the pattern is correct, but the market turns out to be stronger. If you trade with the trend, you have a chance to capture such an impulse, unlike with a counter-trend approach. After a strong upward impulse, a candle with three seller clusters appears, confirming their strength. This also forms a reversal pattern, and it works for some time after testing the broken clusters. However, after some time, the trend resumes, and we observe four distinct signs of successful seller aggression. Yet again, the trend prevails, and these clusters are also broken like the first pattern. Such situations show how crucial it is to not only analyze each and every cluster but also to understand the market context in which they occur. The patterns are mirrored for the buyer aggression. After the start of active trading, we see a downtrend and a downward impulse. A strong buyer aggression group appears, but for several candles, it remains without a reaction. On the sixth candle after the decline, we see a price reaction upwards. Then, there's a retest of the buyer clusters, and the reversal gains momentum. After the correction, aggressive buyers emerge once again below the moving average, and the subsequent candle shows a price reaction to the buyers. Following this, there's a retest of the cluster and a continuation of the reversal with an upward impulse. This video turned out to be quite concise but it might be a bit challenging for those who have never worked with clusters, so watch it a few times to understand the mechanics of events and the sequence of patterns. Together, these two patterns will provide an understanding of when each group of traders falls into a trap and when there are signs of a reversal and trend change. Hit the like this video, subscribe, and download the platform for free. See you in the next video.